Hello. The next thing I wanted to share with you is rendering variant renderer for responsive images. So SXA can render through a simple image rendering field uh, by providing the image, um, the, the field that is of type image. That was always there and that is the simplest selection of the image field which renders the well the image field uh, and you can pick a media let's pick a nice big one and that's basically what you get you get an image the rendering image the image that will render at full width and full at full scale uh, every time uh, you know everything will be depending on your styles however I have a pretty big image here and let me select the another browser where I have it rendered you can see that this file is six megabytes in size that's pretty massive especially when we talk about uh, downloading this on a, a mobile device so to avoid that we have introduced the responsive image field renderer for this I have created a responsive image rendering variant and to be honest you won't notice a difference uh, when you when you use responsive image during the editing because we just use field image field renderer um, for uh, the purpose of editing so that you can benefit from all the nice tools that are in the platform for uh, edit for editing uh, and picking images so you still get exactly the same rendering uh, however let me just show you the structure of that image renderer uh, in practice so in case of this responsive image I have created a responsive image renderer I have provided it with the same image field but then the SXA magic starts so this string is going to be rendered verbatim on the page and this is a string for your browser to interpret uh, what it what it says is when my screen is at most 320 pixels use a 250 pixel wide uh, image then if it goes over that limit and under 480 use image of 200 and 440 and so on and so on up to 3000 pixels then this string we don't really interpret there is a lot changing a lot of a lot evolving in the browser space so that's uh, for your front-end developer to provide for you and then we list comma separated all the sizes for the images to be available to at this point we don't yet uh, resize the images uh, at any point and we also allow you to specify the default size so that you your browser who doesn't support responsiveness has something to render now the trick is really happening on the browser side and let me just show you the quick article uh, for list apart it's all about the syntax that is being provided to the browser so the browser needs to know that this URL is 480 pixels wide this URL is 640 pixels wide and so on and so on and then it's up to the browser to interpret this this is the string that I've shown you that you need to get from your front-end developer and then the default is the size that we've had in the default field now what SXA does is when it renders it will let me inspect that element it will 
craft the uh, this uh, field for you so that you get the uh, you get the proper sizes uh, every time so let me reload that because I had the previous variant selected here and I'm not 100% sure if I saved yes I did so let me inspect that again And you can see that uh, for this element, uh, we have actually provided the sizes. You have the source, which is the default source for that uh, for that uh, smallest size that we used as a default. But then you also have the source set, which crafts the URLs for you for 280 pixels wide it will resize the image for you for 800 the same for 440 the same so basically it creates the URLs with the uh, with the media request protection hash uh, so you're serving to your browser the um, the bigger image tag but at that point even at that point no resizing of images is happening yet now let's switch to the network and let's see how the browser behaves so let's refresh the page and i'm filtering to only show this image and you can see that the browser detected that it is under 320 pixels wide so it loaded the 280 uh, pixels wide image and the size is 29 kilobytes now we start going up the browser detected that it can download a bigger image so it will download the one that is 64 kilobytes wide at which point Sitecore has actually resized the image for us then we're going further we get the 800 pixels wide image further and further we get the 1000 pixels wide image and you can see that how the size grows there we go we've got 1600 almost a megabyte and then we go over the biggest threshold and we have the 3000 pixels wide version of the image which is 2000 uh, over 2 megabytes that's still less than the original image which was at six and a half uh, megabytes but you get the idea that you can save quite a bit of bandwidth with that and usually the resizing well on a on a device the resizing doesn't happen the browser when I refresh it will load only the image that is appropriate for that uh, for that device and it will load the best image for that device so the responsive image allows you to save quite a bit of bandwidth with very minimum effort you simply um, you simply configure the field and you render the image and you will save massively on the bandwidth uh, for images all it takes is to define this responsive image and since this is rendering variant renderer you actually get it for free for every component that support rendering variants that can be page lists, image, uh, you know, image like I'm using it right now, page content, or any other component supporting rendering variants. So that's one way of using responsive image renderer. And another is you might actually noticed in one of my earlier videos when I was actually going into our blog posts and I used them purely to resize images and going through images that uh, that going through fields that would otherwise be not renderable so let's go to our rendering variant for page content and post author and as you might remember on our 
uh, on our blogs we have an author which is this guy here and then as you remember I've created the edit frame before on my author I have selected a number of images that uh, that are associated those are not image files however I could still render them how is that it's basically it goes from the post through the author field to the author and then through related media field on author into the image media and then underneath that I drop since now I'm within the media item and I'm rendering actually media item uh, uh, media item in here in that I'm in that context I just leave the field name empty and I just provide the width so I just say I want this image in width 50 let's resize it to 150 and let's see how this image will resize right now and it didn't because what didn't I do maybe I haven't oh I know what I did I actually have a style in here that says let's just have it 170 and let's refresh and you can see that I actually have an image in here that is of width 150 so you can use the responsive image for resizing and for rendering linked media and you can use the responsive images for um, purely for resizing and saving bandwidth it doesn't allow you to set anything like a focal point yet or um, or crop it or change uh, or change the uh, aspect ratio but it's great for reaching out to media that would otherwise not be renderable easily and it allows you to save quite a bit of bandwidth thank you and I hope you learned something <laughs>